Hello and welcome to another edition of Drop In Bombs with me, your host, Corey Ballmeister. As always, brought to you by the lovely folks over at StarCityGames.com, bringing you the best in trading card needs. All right, so huge news in the world of Standard. I could not be happier. I'm like a kid on Christmas morning going to open my presents, except the presents are just new decks that have been buried below Wilderness Reclamation's vile existence through Standard for far too long. So Wilderness Reclamation, Teferi Time Reveler, Gross Spiral, Coldron Familiar, gone, done, banned out of here. I could not be happier. Even though the rotation is going to happen soon, does that just mean I'm not going to play standard until then? No, because it's my job, you know, and I'm playing all these SCG events. So of course I'm not going to stop playing standard, but now I get to enjoy it again. Don't get me wrong. I had decent success with team of reclamation, some fun with mono green. Uh, and I, I don't, I didn't mind playing the deck to be honest, but I think I was just making the best of a bad situation because now I'm really happy. And even just playing these three matches have just renewed my faith in uh, Magic the Gathering and Standard. So it's been a blast. This deck specifically started off as a Michael Majors brew uh, that I saw on his Twitter account, one of our very own. I made some changes to the deck, mostly incorporated Terror of the Peaks because Earl plus Terror of the Peaks is, well, terrifying. So I absolutely love the idea here. Niv Mizzet is an awesome card in the deck as well. I talked about any changes I would make in the deck tech, but I also talked about the matchups. So if you don't want spoilers, don't fast forward to that and then enjoy the games. See you there. All right, and welcome to round one here with Teamer Midrange. After all the bands, I could not be happier. It is going to just be a treat to play standard instead of, well, <clears throat> a nightmare. This Teamer deck, not as oppressive as Teamer Reclamation. So I think we're gonna have a lot more fun and uh, we're gonna learn something. This deck might be bad, might be good, but we're gonna figure it out and we're gonna try a bunch of new decks uh, over the course of the next couple weeks in standard. So I'm pretty pumped. So, all right, we're going first. Oh baby, fan me down, we have the combo. I am so in, <laughs> I'm so excited for new cards. I just can't even express it. Bannings are never good, but when they lead to much better formats, it feels like Christmas morning. And you know, uh, that's just how it feels right now. So I'm pumped. Okay, Joriel, your go. Please don't kill it. Please don't kill this busted creature. Oh my God. Just think about this though. We can go Uro, get a cat. Then the next turn, if possible, no, I think it's better this way. Then Teferi, get a cat. And then the next turn, Terror Peaks, get a cat, shoot something for two. Wow. Let's hope it all works like that. Yeah, I was gonna say those colors kill things. So, all right, don't take my arrow. These two are both good. No. All right, plan's been foiled, but hey, that's not bad. We're gonna play it. This is a 1-1 one, one and a 2-2. Two, two. Cut. Bang. We'll be able to discard Storm's Wrath since we very clearly will not need it. Okay. They're ripping our hand apart. Hand Disruption is back on the menu, I suppose. Nothing great this turn, so we'll just say go. All right. Terror of the Peaks, do some work. Agonizing Remorse was gross, just not having the ability to flash back. Oh. Okay, we're extinct. Well, we're gonna go for it. Um, so for Niv Mizzet, red, 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 blue, 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 it doesn't matter. Terror. Let's hope it lives. If it lives, I feel pretty good about winning the game with this. Okay, they're getting close to that already, unfortunately. No land though, that's big. All right. No, thank you. Bang. Your go. 
Now all we need is Uro and we just absolutely destroy him. Take six. Can't bring back Uro quite yet. Well, we don't want that to happen. That is enough for Uro, but they're dead. <laughs> Shock! <laughs> oh, that's a shock off the top, please. I'll be taking that. All right, scavenging ooze for Uro. Aether Gust, not great. A lot of discard spells, so I do like that. I kind of like Lovestruck Beast, as weird as it seems. No, it doesn't seem good enough. All right, definitely don't want Storm's Wrath. I don't think Aether Gust is good enough. Or Shock. Yeah, Shock seems very low impact. Actually, we have a lot of bad cards, so we're gonna have to bring in a lot of things. So definitely this, definitely Negates. And then four cards, we could just bring in four Lovestruck Beast. Go a little bit more aggro against them. We don't have a lot of one ones though, so this card is really meant to be defensive. Aether Gust has targets, so I don't think we should steer away from that. And it probably has some pretty good targets. I mean, there's Cavaliers, there's Uros. Yeah, we might just want all of them, now that I think about it. This seems perfectly fine to me. A lot of threats, a lot of answers. I think that's a good way to beat a Sultai control deck, because that's all they are is answers. So, kind of fighting fire with fire. We're just kind of an Uro mirror now, where we have to visit all of a sudden to restart, which is a good value card. So, we'll see. We'll see. I can see this being a bad matchup, but we're going to find out. It's not insane, but they're on the mulligan. I'm gonna keep. Opt could be anything. All right, give me Jorels, Joriels, whatever you call them. Okay, that makes me wanna actually opt first. Makes me want to opt first, just in case I get Joriel. Or maybe we could even get a Grow Spiral. Just kidding, that one's gone. And I could never be happier. Okay. It's a spell. It's not a good one. I'm gonna bottom it. That is a better one. Looks like we're gonna be doing some triome cycling, I imagine. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna play any of these. Against a heavily discard deck, um, they're gonna rip our hand apart, so I think it's just gonna be a bunch of tap lands. Is there anything we're really gonna wanna Aether Gust? Maybe. Would we Aether Gust and Uro? Probably not. So I don't think so. Do we want to play one of them though? We, we are going to need double green at some point. All right, I'll be a punk. I'll play one of them. Would you like to touch my Gust or just my Terror? That makes sense. I don't know how great Gust is going to be. So they, oh yeah, if it's a land, they don't have to sacrifice it. Okay, now I regret playing the first Triome, but eh, we're all right. All right, leave that on top, cycle, classic. Okay. Cultivate. It's not a bad gust target, to be honest. Uh, maybe it's just a better negate target, because then I can deal with Cavalier. All right. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Teferi, master of time. A card that was so bad before, but so good right now. All right, we, we've officially got our cycling down with Teferi. Oh, man. I am like a, a giddy schoolboy 
that finally gets to go back and see my friends. I am so excited. Okay. Uh, don't need the lamb. Okay. <clears throat> we do need a green source. I don't even know if I want this. I think I'll take it. But I might just discard it to Teferi. <laughs> that Teferi Master of Time was an insane draw. And when, you know, one Teferi is gone, another one always comes up to rise. And hopefully that's the Master of Time. And hopefully, for the sake of this drop and bomb, that this Teamer deck is the right shell for it. But who knows, it's day one, and that's only match one. So we'll see you shortly for round number two. All right, and welcome to round number two here with Teamer Midrange. All right, this is a little clunky on the draw, but we got a shock, so what could really go wrong? So I'm gonna keep. All right, let's see the power of... I just had a feeling it was mono red too. I just had a feeling. Which our shock plan is not uh, not terrible against them. So we're gonna lead with this. We're gonna try to take as the least amount of damage from our lands as humanly possible. And then start killing stuff. We'll be killing that. Bang. Um, we could just fire prophecy it. The only problem is that we can't really kill an annex then. Yeah, it's probably safer to just shock. Say go. Fire Prophecy does have that nice little looting effect. We'll have to break that up. And now we're gonna have to find an arrow. Or we're gonna be dead real quick. It's decent. Should we just do this now in case we find a shock? Probably. Never gonna have time to cycle, so might as well just play these lands while we can. God. Ugh, where's our blast zones? All right, Storm's Wrath or Bust, probably. Because we're going to take one, two, three, four. I guess Gus does keep us alive, but then from that point, what are we doing? Um. Yeah, well, I mean, we're dead. We're dead. So we'll cycle this. Come on! One card off. Well, if we can somehow live. So we're going to Gus this in combat. What? It didn't stop at combat. Well, we were never winning this game anyways, but. Cause now we gust that, now we're just dead. Well, arena got me good here, I guess. Yeah, we're still dead. All right, well, sorry about that misclick there, but I have a feeling we were not gonna win anyways. Even literally if we just bounced Stormwrath and they put it up, or we gusted the Fervent Champion, they put it on top of their library, and then we Storm's Wrath, then we just die right away. So it really didn't matter. So Lovestruck Beast, Oozy Ooze, Wrath, Lava Coils, Aether Gust. We turn into a bit of a control deck here. Uh, I don't think Typhoons are good. I honestly don't think Joriel is that good, but I think they're worth keeping in. We're going to neutralize. We probably want to cut some of this top end. And I mean, I think just the more expensive, the worse in this scenario. And now, maybe it's just still trim from the top. We're just an Uro Teamer control deck. 
And I mean, I think that's a much better game plan than trying to win with Terror of the Peaks. We're fine with one. If we're only gonna have one of something, maybe we would rather have a Niv. Or it could be like an Agape, but that seems worse. I'm gonna do one of Niv. Because YOLO, that's why. <coughs> All right, everyone, we got horrifically unlucky that game by not drawing Storm's Wrath one turn earlier as only a two of in our deck, so we have the right to complain. Just kidding, we're gonna get them the post board games. Okay, I think we can keep this. And that's a mulligan. And we got one mulligan here. We're gonna get a second one. Going once, going twice. They keep, here we go. Scorch, Spitter. All right, let's play this and we'll say go. Pass to attackers. So we're in combat. Do we let this slide? I mean, this is a one mana 2-2 two -two that always is doing damage to us. So honestly, I'm just going to kill it now. Um... I'm gonna get rid of Stomping Ground. Oh, baby. Yep, that's an arrow. Okay. A little punished on that. I could see that uh, going badly for us. So we're gonna arrow. We're probably gonna opt as well. So gaining a little less life, but I think it's more important right now to find uh, answers to kill creatures, even if it means a little bit of damage. Because we're at 21. <laughs> All right. Three one drops into an annex. Oh my, I know I just cursed myself. I know they're gonna do it. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's pretty good. All right, we're gonna opt. I would like a Storm's Wrath, please. It's not terrible. Okay, that's not terrible. Joriel into Uro here is pretty strong. Once again, gotta take another hit. All right, now it's just a uh, Embercleave dodge, I imagine. Okay, because then that should be... We're getting close. We can Lava Coil plus Uro if Joriel dies. We actually want to aggressively block with Joriel, I think. Just so we can bring back Uro next turn. <coughs> but it's not the worst to just Lava Coil something and then Aether Gust during their turn. But for instance, if Fervent Champion attacks here... Uh, without another one, and it doesn't look like Joriel, you know, it looks like a weird attack. We're gonna snap block uh, just for that reason. Okay. Just to get that extra point. Oh, especially with Lava Coil. Especially with them being able to get one of our Lava Coils. No! <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, We're gonna block. Because they can Lava Coil our thing anyways, and that would exile it. So we're going to chump block this, and it shuts down Runaway Steamkin's ability for this turn. Okay, so now we get to go like this. Lava Coil, and a row! Alright. My favorite Titan of Nature's Wrath. Can y'all tell I'm having fun with new standard? <laughs> okay, it's not the death punch at least. I think we'll be fine. Hi ya. <laughs> oh, yes. All right. 
No real changes we can make, to be honest, except Terror of the Peaks to uh, uh, Niv Mizzet. You know, switch those out. Maybe a Shark Typhoon instead as a little bit of a surprise blocker in the early game. But honestly, we don't want to draw any of the one of slots there. So I think it's just the higher impact card is what we want to do. But Terror of the Peaks just could be the higher impact card. So. And it's cheaper on the draw, so I think we have to do everything we can to be getting to the battlefield often and, you know, just early. Early and often. <coughs> All right. Final game or round number two. Coming at you. Hey, this isn't bad. I think we'll take this. Now, depending on our draw, it's going to influence our play... Wow. <clears throat> I think that was just enough to play Lovestruck Beast on one as a blocker, but that, that one one really does not do anything right now, though. Yeah, I, I actually think that's not right. <clears throat> nope, mountains are already pretty bad with Uro. It's just kind of a necessary evil. Okay, we're gonna wanna break that up. Fire Prophecy is better than Scavenging Ooze here. So let's make sure we do this right. Pass to combat. Yes. Pass to attackers, no thank you. All right, <laughs> we did it right. Okay, Um, I think I can get rid of this. Yeah, we already have enough red. Okay. I'll take one. <coughs> mm. That's a good one. That's a good one. Still pretty far away from... From Uro, so that makes me kind of want to just love Struck Beast here as a wall. Not in love with it, but yeah, we're gonna do it. Five, five. Claim would be really bad. That'd be nine damage. That's not Embercleave, thank God. Are we really just holding them back? Awesome, okay. Um, so I don't really want to play Earl right now if we have this. What I would rather do, okay, I think this is going to be an awesome play. Scavenging Ooze will have a shock ready for Tybalt when it goes down, and then we'll play this land to be able to gain one life and make it a 3-3. I love that play. Or we can opt if uh, we want to as well, but leaves us uh, a little bit of wiggle room. We got one creature to eat. Yes, we're in the Embercleave dodging room here. We gotta have better answers for that card. Maybe I gotta have like some wilts or something. Still a pretty scary battlefield, Embercleave or not, but much scarier with the cleave. That boosts the Annex. I see what they're doing. That is a slight reason to be wanting to kill one of the creatures. Attack away. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna kill Tybalt. Oh, I feel like death. And let's get a counter. Still gonna be pretty far away from Uro. Ah, oh, Bone Crusher. Kind of punished there. That's okay. 
All right. A row. Now we're going to play this. Yeah, we're starting to be in a lot of trouble here, but do we play this? I mean, the odds we get a shock. Shock would be good, though. I would be willing to shock for a shock. So I think it's worth it. I think I'm willing to take that, though, because that's going to be our six cards. So next turn we can go Earl plus Gust, and hopefully it gets us back in the game. Yep. All right. It's going to be a turn where we're going to take uh, some, some huge damage. If they castle us, there's not much we can do. Just don't have Embercleave this turn, because like Bone Crusher and being able to Embercleave with that two other mana, I don't think we could come back. But yeah, just a couple creatures, that's okay. Wow, they are playing way too defensive against an Uro deck. Wow. Earl takes over eventually. It always does. I think they really needed to attack there. Because worst case, they trade trade these two. Uh, they trade Annex for Lovestruck Beast. They get two tokens. And then they just got through five damage. Five is a lot. And they didn't really trade much. They still gained in that resource. So I think they're too passive on this. But I'll take it. All right, now we got two gusts, so I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good. This is the kind of deck I want against Mono Red, not like a reactive Azorius deck or something like that. Uh, I want a proactive green deck that gets to play good creatures like this, an excellent uh, disruption like this. So I do think Mono Red is going to be very popular. Mono Red, Team of Reclamation, Mono Green, Mono Black, Marta. Mardu, Wynota, I think those will be the initial good decks. Okay. Right, we'll be gusting Annex regardless here, but we'll let them attack. Because now their attack isn't so good with the gust. Like, now we actually get to pick apart some stuff. We're going to take some damage, but that's okay. Wow. Just unreal. Okay, let's get this out of there. They bottom that too? Addicts is such a good card. I'm so confused by this mono blue player. God, think if we just draw Storm's Wrath. <laughs> Storm's Wrath and they're so dead. All right, I'm actually going to play this before I attack just because of Storm's Wrath. If I draw that, the game ends. And we want to keep one... Oh, no, we don't have uh, Teferi Master of Time anymore. I was like, we want to keep one land in, in hand. All right, we'll play this first. We still have our land drop to make. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in there. Start pressuring. We get an extra card. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now we'll say go. Here they come. I probably could have broke that up beforehand. Here, we're going to block here. Oh, boy. Do we just gust whatever they put the cleave on? 
We just gust the cleave. Hmm. That's bad. What are they going to put it on? Runaway Steam Cut? Probably. So then I gust that away. Yeah, I think I like gusting whatever they put it on. Yeah, we're actually definitely not out of this. It's a lot of damage. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to actually get lucky now. Haha, <laughs> don't run, GG. <laughs> Oh, they have two devils, don't they? Okay. Yeah, all right. I believe it was two. Maybe they'll misclick. And we get to just bring it back, but... <laughs> Still, that was insane. Okay. Finally, we found a storm trap at the perfect time. They drew Cleave a little late. Drawn Cleave a little earlier would have just been backbreaking. Uh, I believe we have two of each land. No, oh, I thought that was a clam. I'm like, oh my god. Uh, yeah, put this tapped. We are drawing a lot of lands. Bang. All right, but this shock is lethal next turn. With Uro, of course. So we can either just take 10 or just take five and throw a Lovestruck Beast in front of it. We don't really have many one ones that we can get. So if we only take, we go to 11, then this doesn't kill us because that could be 12. So we, yeah, we go to 11, this would put us up to 14. Now let's say they have a chump blocker to stay alive. Um, they would get a satyr. Um, so we'd be at 14, they would have a satyr, an annex, the cleave, and let's say we drew blank blank. Um, so that would be one, two with the, I'm doing castle math as well, plus 12. So that'd be 14. That's exactly lethal, but it doesn't matter at any point anyways, this would be the same, right? So I think we would have to draw something if they drew a chump blocker. Or we'd have to maybe leave this back or something. Well, that was insane. Just in case. All right. Well, that was close. Embercleave, I mean, just showing the power of Embercleave there, like, it, it is just such a hard card to interact with. But a card that just impressed me, Storm's Wrath is going to be the MVP, but a card that just impressed me on that last turn, Lava Coil. Lava Coil for Annex is going to be huge. It's going to be good against Mono Green. It's good against Wynota. Lava Coil, I think, might be back. You know, I mean, we're going to be playing a lot more aggressive decks with all these bannings, so keep Lava Coil in mind. I think that's a card that got unbanned as well. So see you for our third and final round here on Dropping Bombs. 
All right, and welcome to the third and final round here with Teamer Midrange. On the draw, opponent has kept two shocks is a good card to have on the draw, and then Terror of the Peaks. Still unsure how good this card is in the deck. Um, it's seen pretty medium so far, but we haven't played against any other mid-range to slower aggro decks like mono black, mono green. I think it's going to be an all-star, especially mono green. I think it's going to be the blade there. And maybe Winota if they don't have their perfect draw. So we're going to try it, but I'm skeptical of this card just being good in this deck, but we'll see. Okay, mono black. We'll get a little bit of a test. Now we can shock to shock. Um, shocking gutter bones is kind of feels bad because they come back, but... Or we don't shock, and then we can... <laughs> when I say shock, I mean pay two life with the land. What punishes us from... No, I don't, I don't think really nothing. And we could find like Storm's Wrath on top, and then we'd really want to. Another shock I just think is too much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Lame. I think it's just going to be a double shock kind of turn. Um, anything that punishes us? No, but letting them attack us allows spawn to land, and that is punishing. So I think we just do this now. Timur, it's also good against Uro, so in case we draw that. The main deck Aether Gusts are going to be heinous, of course. Yikes. We need... Oh, we have double red, so I think we just have to cycle Triome here. Yikes. 14. At least it's a three-turn clock. No, they can bring back Gutter Bones to make it a two-turn clock. Yeah, we're dead. We can't beat that card. Without Uro. Cycle? <laughs> well, this is going to be a fast one. This is going to be a quick GG. We can block here with Shark Typhoon, so we are alive. Uh, but Terror of the Peaks is not going to be the card that gets us back. Might even be just best to concede and not show them the cards in our deck. What could we fathomly draw to get us out of this? If we cycle... Like, Shock plus Storm's Wrath. Taking five. We're going to four. Then we could take two. To go to two. Shock plus Storm's Wrath, and then the board's clean. Okay, well, I mean, that's an out to, to be uh, alive here, so I think that is worth it to give it a shot. And this is all just if we draw absolute perfect. We have to draw, cycle into Shock and then draw into Storm's Wrath. But, I mean, we, we have a percentage chance to win the game, so you have to go for it. If there was no real shot, then it's not worth it. But, I mean, they can also just have a removal here. Okay. Come on, Storm's Wrath. Oh my god, no. Oh, no, that settles it. Yeah, that, that settled it. Okay, wow. <laughs> I love a good sweat. I love a good sweat. All right, that was a beating. This could be a bad one. This could be a bad matchup. We do not have ways to deal with Rotting Regisaur. Holy cow. This is probably the best way. Make a 1-1 and block with that. Yikes. Storm's Wrath is also not that good because they have the 4-5. Lava Coil seems pretty strong. Ooh, this could be bad. They have a lot of removals, so Terror of the Peaks, I think, is going to be good and bad. Same with niv it's better. If they just have a removal spell, if we have the option to play both of those, we play niv it because it draws us a card, but that doesn't make it that much better. Um... So let's take out some of the slow stuff. I actually think Teferi Master of Time might be kind of good. 
I think Joriel is actually going to be insane. We're really going to rely on Joriel. Shock is okay. It's good if we leave in niv -Mizzet. I think we have to leave in Terror of the Peaks just to see if it's good in this matchup. Um, Shark Typhoon seems pretty medium. I want all my Uros. That's kind of the secret. But Shark Typhoon, I don't think we're going to have time for. And it's probably niv -Mizzet. I hate to keep taking niv -Mizzet out because this is kind of a cool, hot niv -Mizzet deck. I think Teferi, we're going to take out on the draw. But I think on the play, it's actually good. Um, maybe Scavenging Ooze is just not good. And we get to eat Gutter Bones. I don't think it is good enough. I would rather have the big stuff. Let's try that. On the draw, I bet we'll bring in Ooze for Teferis. I think that'll be the plan if we win this game. All right, final round of this week's Dropping Bombs. Play first. Pretty good. Pretty good. We'll see if we want to... If we can get an untapped land, we'll probably Joriel into Uro. But if we don't, we think about just Storm's Wrathing. So we'll see what our first draw step uh, leads us to. Or if they just kill Joriel, you know. Okay. Our best two cards are creatures, luckily. Okay. That is a definite reason to play Joriel. <clears throat> Don't have agonizing remorse. Oh, not bad, not bad. Had it. Had it the whole time. Okay. Get a cat. All right. <clears throat> it's kind of all we can do, though, so not a great follow up or anything. There is a world where we just Storm's Wrath here that adds three cards to the yard. Feels kind of bad with this, but just essentially wasting it. But then we get a Storm's Wrath back. All right. YOLO. Blue, 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 red, red, red. Okay, so anything with Niv, basically, except if we draw a forest. Yikes. Anything but a forest. <laughs> I mean, it allows us to play uh, Uro next turn. Even though it's a bad exchange, I think it's worth it. So blue or red. Doesn't really matter. Just maintaining our life total as long as we can. And now we got Ura or Niv Mizzet if we draw land. Both are going to be very strong. Ranky Poo. Ooh. Well, feels kind of bad to just let them kill this. But if I draw an untapped land, I can lava coil this as well. All right, I'm going for the high risk play. So even if they make a sacrifice, it's not like it's gone forever. Untap land would be excellent. <clears throat> Just the worst possible for us. All right, 
Well, we'll have to lava coil the ranky poo. It's just nip missing a clock. Hope they don't draw removal for it. Your go. My flyer's bigger. My flyer's bigger. Draw. Okay. Well, that was absolutely busted. <laughs> I would like to draw a card. I think I just say go here. I did not risk the Niv Mizzet. <clears throat> Can't really lose with it in play, in my opinion. Or, uh, I would assume. Yeah. <laughs> oh! All right, Niv Mizzet seems insane. Terror of the Peaks dies to a lot, but it still blocks Rankle, and it still gets out of hand. So I think it's worth it. So I forgot how many flyers this deck has. It is it is pretty scary in that sense. So maybe Ooze just isn't good. Like I could just see Shark Typhoon being better. It's not good early, which is a problem. But God, Joriel wasn't good either. But it is good against Rotting Regisaur for the early game. Hmm. I wish we had a four storms, Wrath. That's like the best card. So I think I think that's gonna be one change I'm gonna for sure make. Just want more two drops, I think. This can be game breaking. All right. Well, should I do it like a coward and go one and one? Nah, Typhoon is just probably better, even though it's slower. Just a vanilla 2-2 with the scavenging ooze isn't going to be good either. I think you only want that against Uro decks, where it's also a good threat. Okay, I'll keep. My opponent has taken a mulligan. We need blue. Two mulligans. We might be getting lucky here. Our hand is good. Storm's Wrath and Lovestruck Beast are pretty nice. One, one human. This isn't gonna work out for them. Right, we're gonna kill it immediately just in case they have spawn. All right, let's top deck a blue card or a blue source. All right, rotting Regisaur is kind of brutal. At least we have the love struck. I think we take that too. All right, we'll happily trade. think we're dead. Seven toughness is unbeatable. Oh no, just like that? Just like that, Demonic Embrace? Who plays that? Oh, it was so good against us. All right, well, we gotta have better answers for Rotting Regisaur. We gotta have answers where you can just point at anything and, and kill it. I mean, is that just Brazen Borrower, maybe? Wow. Okay. Good game. Brutal. Brutal. Demonic Embrace is pretty damn good with Rotting Regisaur, it turns out. So, all right. I really wanted that third game, especially when they mold to five, but dang. I guess there's a new two-card combo in town. Instead of Wilderness Reclamation Expansion Explosion, Rotting Regisaur, Demonic Embrace. GG. Stay tuned for the deck tech where we talk about some changes. 
and welcome to the Deck Tech here with Teamer Midrange. That's right, not Teamer Reclamation, Teamer Midrange. I could not be happier to not have to play against Teamer Reclamation and Standard for the rest of my life. I would be very content with that and light and God, we can hope that it never gets a reprint, so that's gonna be true, so. Like I've been uh, this entire video, I am a happy, happy boy being able to play with new cards that have seemed really powerful, but we just haven't had access to them because there's been so many other outrageous things happening uh, that have shut down mid-range. You know, Wilderness Reclamation, that deck, plus Bant Ramp, just shuts down any kind of mid-range things because they're going so far over the top. Now, not every deck has to be green-blue. And for instance, I do not think the green cards were great besides Uro. I mean, I guess the only other green cards is Joriel, but I like the blue-red shell of this, and I love Uro because it's so powerful. But, you know, outside of this, these were mostly blue-red cards, but a lot that impressed me, some stuff that didn't. Uh, let's talk about them. So, like I said at the beginning, this was a Michael Majors brew originally. I changed some cards, but the bulk of this deck, Michael Majors, uh, one of my uh, co-workers, good friends, old testing buddies, uh, used to be a play design, uh, play design guy as of recently, all around just a great guy. So uh, I know he plans on writing about some broad strokes of standard now with the bands. So look for that next week on uh, StarCityGames.com. But we went 2-1, felt pretty bad against Mono Black. I am not gonna lie. Uh, I don't know what we can really do to beat that. It's gotta be something that deals with Rotting Regisaur. Otherwise, we're just really cold to that card. I mean, Uro lines up quite well, but when you can't turbo it out fast enough, and then, I mean, to put it on top of that, to, that Demonic Embrace, we probably just need Brazen Borrowers, you know? And I don't love that card, but it's probably needed. All right, so we got four ops, four shocks. You you almost always see these in Is It decks, in like Is It Phoenix decks, because they're so good at being like the third spell to bring back Arc Light or whatever. Um, but they're also insanely good with Niv Mizzet. You know, being able to chain one drops with Niv Mizzet is just amazing. And uh, this essentially is a Niv Mizzet deck. The Majors Brew that I saw on Twitter. Um, was just Niv Mizzet. It wasn't playing Terror of the Peaks, but I thought Terror of the Peaks with Uro is something that was underrepresented in Standard already, but that's because there were so many other powerful things going on. So Terror of the Peaks, I do think has greatly improved after the bannings. I just don't think this is the shell for it. It didn't feel great. So I think I would probably be cutting Terror of the Peaks for like another Niv Mizzet, maybe another Shark Typhoon. I, I don't know. This deck does need a little bit of changes, but it's week one. You know, I mean, it's day one for me. This is the day I found out about the announcements. So we're kind of just throwing stuff at a dartboard. And I'm sure by the time you have watched this, you have seen a better teamer list on Twitter or something two days into the future. So uh, we got the ops, we got the shocks. Aether Gust in the main, I don't love right now, just because we don't know what the metagame is going to look like. So I would shift those back, even though they are just like the best card against red. Um, God, what did we play? We played red the one round and then like soul time mid, you know, we had, we had targets there as well, but it was just okay. And then it was a straight dead card in our third game. I don't think we want dead cards in our deck uh, like Aether Gust. I think Aether Gust is just going to become a very powerful sideboard card, but just that. <coughs> Fire Prophecy, a very good removal spell that works well with Joriel. Um, you know, being able to go Joriel into kill a creature, make a cat. Super powerful. This deck's all about Joriel on two and then turn three, we have so many ways to be able to put out a cat. You know, Opt, Fire Prophecy, Uro, uh, Shark Typhoon, all ways to do it on turn three and then Teferi Master of Time to do it forever. Um, and, th and that's just the plan. So I like a lot of these Is It cards. I really want to try them in maybe a certain Is It deck that I always try, but it always ends up being bad. But I think I'm going to try it again, maybe for next week. Uh, that's Is It Phoenix, by the way, with Ryle and, oh, I love it. I love it. I'm getting excited already thinking about it. We'll talk about the sideboard here. Two more Aether Gusts. Like I said, I want these Gusts to the board. So let's have four Aether Gusts in the board. Negates, gotta have them. Lava Coil impressed me. So depending on what we see the metagame shape out to be, 
Uh, you know, as long as there's not a hundred rotting Regisaurs running around, Lava Coil might be the removal of choice. Now, the problem is against Winota, it's not that good because, well, they just Winota and kill you uh, the turn they play it. So I think we maybe have to <clears throat> get something that's instant speed, but I'm going to have to go to the spell book and try to figure out some new cards for uh, next week here. A couple scavenging moves for other Uro decks. Um, just a good card too. Good against Mono Red when you can gain some life. Love Struck Beast is for Mono Red. Anything aggro really. Good against Winota. Good against Mono Black as we saw. Mono Black without Demonic Embrace, I should say. And then another Storm's Wrath. I even want another one. Uh, I just think this is the best card against aggro. Once again, I just have to keep saying it, except Rotting Regisaur, because that's a big hole for this deck. That has to be solved, if that's a big deck. And then one more niv Mizzet against maybe any kind of control deck, anything where the uncounterable effect is really good, or if just niv Mizzet uh, themselves is really strong. So, all right, that's going to do it for Teamer Midrange here in a brand new Standard World. I want to thank you so much for watching this week's Dropping Bombs, and we'll see you next week for more Standard Action. Bye-bye.